Let's talk about the TC Helicon Mic Mechanic 2. Now, first critique here, I'm just going to say, if it's the Mic Mechanic 2, could you put a little 2 on there? Just a little 2 right there. Make it easier to tell the difference between the 1 and the 2, I'm just saying. Like, even on the back of mine, mine does not say Mic Mechanic 2 on it anywhere. So, um... Also, I, I would like to point out, like, I don't know a whole lot about the TC Helicon company. Uh, I always thought they were just a Canadian company that made, like, vocal effect pedals and stuff. But I did get this and saw that it said Music Tribe on the back. So, obviously those guys are buying everything. Which, you know, leads me to wonder about the quality. Now, full disclosure, I did not buy this new. I bought it open boxed off a of reverb. And the reason I bring that up, it's going to be one of my critiques, but I bought it open box off a of reverb. So who knows? And also buy an open box off a of reverb, a little spot right there. I don't know if it comes up or if you can read that, but it literally says serial number. There is no serial number on mine, which also makes me wonder, is this even a legit product? I mean, it's definitely a product, like this is it. But, you know, was it stolen somewhere? Did I buy stolen merchandise off a of reverb? I do not know. I don't know. But, that's full disclosure on the product. Bought it open boxed. Doesn't even have a goddamn serial number on the back. Let's just say, just spent the 150 bucks and bought a new one. Instead, I think I bought this for around $85, which my use for it, like, I'm not a musician. I'm a sound tech, DJ, I do some karaoke. I actually bought this for myself, and I was going to hook it up to my karaoke mic, and then when I sing a song, oh, man, I sound so much better than you. <laughs> actually, I'm not much of a karaoke singer, so this was more for, like, you know, like a little, like a little crutch, a little crutch for me to hang on to. Um... So that's what I bought it for. I did bring it out to a karaoke gig and I was going to use it, but I had it off, you know, so I can make all my announcements and stuff. And then I was like, all right, I'm gonna throw my headphones on, turn this on and see what I sound like. And I was listening to myself. Well, I tried to listen to myself, but it didn't work. So I'm like, well, that's weird. Pedal locked up. So turned it off, turned it back on, unlocked. And then I was like, okay, I'm gonna set that to the side for a second, make sure that doesn't happen again. Five minutes later, I go to turn the pedal on, listen to myself in the headphones. It's locked up again. So I'm like, well, what the heck's going on here? So I came home, reflashed the firmware on this thing, and it still has the same problem. Now, if you have, if you leave it on to where it's always has the effect on, it'll last for maybe 20 minutes before it locks up. But if you have the pedal off, it'll lock up a little bit sooner. So I do not know what's up with that, but essentially this pedal is completely worth, worthless to me. But I almost dropped it. But I can't, I can't definitively say you're going to run into these same issues because I did not buy this new. I didn't buy it new. And I don't know the history of the product. I bought it open boxed. So somebody bought this, I assume, or stole it since it doesn't have a serial number. <sighs> And then ran into the same problem and was like, well, I'm just going to throw this on reverb and some sorry sucker is going to buy it from me. This guy. So that's what I get for buying used. I should have just bought new and been done with it. But anyways, let's get on to critiquing this thing. Because I got some is issues. Some issues. Issues. All right. So... I would like to have seen, so these little rubber things do not come on it. Like they give those to you separately. I would have liked to have seen some, some nice rubber feet on this. Uh, one of my other buddies buys, uh, they have like a series of pedals. I, I don't know what the series is called, but I looked at his and the build quality is just, it's better. It's got nice little rubber feet. So I don't know what's going on with this guy right here, but it, it's, and these are weird too. Like, I don't know if you can tell there's like a shine because what this is, is they give you these and you peel off one side so you can stick it on there. Well, the weird thing is 
It's got a peel off thing on this other side too. So am I supposed to peel off both sides and like stick it to the floor so I can never pick it up again? Very confusing. And I do wonder, is, is this what comes with it? Or did that guy just like throw these in the box and be like, this guy's getting these weird little sticky pads. I don't know. Because once again, I bought this thing used. Well, open box. So I like, I think, uh... all right, I'm not going to spend the entire time looking around my office for the box for this thing, but I do still have the box. Like, I mean, it practically was brand new in the box. So I think the guy I bought it ran into issues with it was like, I'm getting rid of this stupid thing. But weird issue number one. Oh, there you can see the shine better. Yeah, weird little little plastic sticky thing. And if I peel this off, it's just going to be sticky on the other side. I think that's weird. Okay, number two. Main thing that you can tell the difference between the one and the two, from what I understand, is the one has a gain knob. Now, I watched a lot of YouTube videos leading up to buying this guy. And everyone was just praising this pedal, like, oh, you don't have to mess with the gain, it's got an auto gain function, you know, it's just so much better than the Mike Mechanic 1. They took all the critiques of the Mike Mechanic 1 and ho -pa! now you have Mike Mechanic 2, everything's fixed and perfect. But, you know, this is my issue and why I started a YouTube channel in the first place. Half the reviews out there are just trying to hawk products, like, hey, I own a store. Let me go down the feature set and sell you this pedal. You can order it from our website. That's a big reason why I started this channel. So anyways, okay, auto game. Sounds amazing. All I gotta do, like, for me, it was like, oh, sweet, I just plug my mic in here, good to go. Like, I'm gonna sound like the best karaoke singer in, uh, you know, a two-block radius of where I am. But let me tell you the downside of auto game, and this is what they don't tell you in the other videos. So I was, I was singing some karaoke in my basement, like trying this pedal out, adjusting a few things. You know, I think I walked into my office for something, set my microphone down, I was between songs, and then I went back into my living room, picked up the mic, hit play on a song, and started singing the beginning of the song again. Well, because there was no audio trans transmitting through this thing, like I wasn't constantly singing the whole time, it was like, where's the voice? I gotta notch the gain up. Where's the voice? Where's the voice? I'm notching the gain up. So then my first couple words were like, whoa, that's loud. And then it was like, oh, here's the voice. I'm gonna auto adjust the gain. Well, in a professional setting, say you stop, like, I don't know what the time, like, I don't know the, the details of how the auto gain works on this, but I'm just saying, like, say you buy this for an acoustic show and, you know, maybe you're not done singing, but maybe you, the bartender brings you a drink or something and you walk over and you grab the drink and you take a sip and you tune your guitar for a second or two and then you start your next song. Do you really want your first four words of the song to be like insanely loud and then all of a sudden the auto gain kicks in and notches it back? I just feel like in a professional setting, I mean, I didn't even want to do that with my karaoke. Like, I can't control exactly where because the auto gain is constantly trying to adjust to the current circumstances. Well, that doesn't work very good. I think I would rather have a gain knob on the side so I can say, oh, right here, that's what works nice for my voice, so I'm going to have the gain set there, and the gain's just always set. So if you watch a lot of other videos where everybody tells like, auto gain, it's the most amazing thing in the world. It is, but it gives you no control over your volume. I mean, what happens with when you do a loud song and you really start hammering on it? Now one could think the auto gain is just going to it's going to help level out your voice to the proper volume for what you have set. You could think that, then what happens on the next song when you start singing quiet? How long does it take to adjust back to make you loud again? Or does it? You know, that, 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 that's, that's, that's the, the tough part about it. Or maybe you want a part of your voice that's like, here is where I'm getting really loud and in your face because everybody's hammering on something, you know? But no, the mic mechanic is like, whoa, he's getting loud. I'm going to dial that back. You don't necessarily want auto gain. It sounds like a nifty idea. It does. 
but in a professional setting, I don't feel like it's that practical. Um, okay, those are my real critiques about this thing. Locks up. I got some weird sticky pads back here, and I don't like the auto game. I think the auto game makes it unusable for me in a professional setting. And that's just doing karaoke, not even a live show. Uh, I'm not, you know, there's a lot of videos out there where people like plug this thing in, dial through. I'm more of an opinion channel. I'm going to tell you what I think about something. I'm not necessarily going to run and give you a future feature overview, how to use it and stuff. I do think that, like, I like the idea of this pedal. I got, I got some echo over here that I can dial into how I want. I got some reverb over here that I can dial into how I want. And I got a little pitch correction. You know, if I want to sound crazy, I'll jack that thing all the way up. Me, I kind of left it in the middle. That's where the detent is, you know. If you don't want quite as much, you can put it down a little bit. You know, I like the premise behind this pedal. I like that it's got a tone knob or a tone button. And you know, you can you can definitely hear the difference. When I have this tone button on, I do feel like it kind of maybe boosts my high end a little bit. It EQs me a little bit to bring my voice out into a mix better. Um, so I think overall, the idea of the pedal is good. But I think if, if I was going to buy this again, well, first of all, I don't think I would. Frankly, I don't even know what to do with this right now because it doesn't work properly. Like, I'd feel like an asshole if I put it on <laughs> reverb and sold it to somebody else. Just keep passing this thing down the line. It's unusable because it locks up every 20 minutes. Like, I hate to say it, but for me, this, I mean, it's probably going to go in the garbage after this video because I can't use it and I don't feel like I can sell it. And I bought it secondhand and it doesn't even have a serial number, so I can't even do any sort of warranty on it. Beware of what you buy on Reverb. But... I don't think I'd buy the Mic Mechanic again. You know, I don't think I'd go and buy the Mic Mechanic 1 after having this one. I think after having, like, I wanted simplicity. That's why I wanted the auto gain. I just wanted something I could plug in and make myself sound better. I like the simplicity. But I think after fiddling around with this for a little bit, you kind of get that feeling of, I need more. And, and maybe, maybe it's, it might be the sound tech in me. Maybe a musician that doesn't know how to do anything and is just like, I just want to like plug this in and sound better. Maybe it is better. But obviously, I'm the angry sound tech, so I am a sound tech. Like, I'm not saying I want more control over the echo, reverb, delay, pitch correction. I mean, maybe I do. Maybe I want more control. I like to control it. But I also wanted simplicity. I would have different feelings about this if it had gain. I like the idea of auto gain, but I don't think auto gain is practical. I think you need to be able to adjust your input gain on a pedal. <sighs> or just have some sort of fixed gain. I don't know. Fixed gain doesn't really work that well because you do get screamers. Like, I've got a pretty quiet voice. Would I buy this again? No, I would not. I'd probably buy one of their more multi-effect pedals. I um, actually came across, I think, something Zoom makes that's like a... I think it's supposed to hang on a mic stand, but you could also set it down. Do not know what that is off the top of my head. Maybe I could Google it really fast while I'm babbling. Um, course I'm getting a phone call. Oh, that's what it is. The, so I was thinking if, if I if I tried something out again that was like a vocal effect thing, since I'm looking to do it more from the karaoke angle and I kind of want this like just, just right next to my mixer where I can just turn it on and off. I'm not really using it as like a foot, foot stomp pedal. That's just my use for it. Obviously a musician probably wants this, but the Zoom V3 multi-effects vocal effect processor, I think I'd give that a try next just, just to see but also I'd have to look and see if it has uh, a gain knob or if it's got some weird auto gain. But I think 
I want simplicity, but I want just a little bit more. I, I, a little bit more than what this offers. But, um, you know, maybe for the... If you're thinking about getting this, I would get version 1. That's what I would get. I wouldn't get version 2 because of the auto gain thing. Anyways, I'm going to stop babbling about the auto gain because I feel like I'm getting fixated on that. That's what annoys me on this pedal. Also, the locking up sucks ass. Um, I just... Music Tribe, Music Group, whatever you want to call them, Behringer, or as I just always call them Behringer, but I feel like that's pronounced wrong. I hear people say Behringer, so I assume that's what it is. I don't know what's going on with them and their whole U.S. distribution thing, their product pipelines. Like, I just, they're trying to dis distribute their own thing or sell online through select vendors. I'm not quite sure what they're doing, but their whole like business practices thing right now has me a little, little confused. So me personally, like I, I'm staying away from all their products right now um, until they figure out what the heck they're doing with U.S. distribution. Now, mind you, I'm in the U.S., probably different in other countries, but they got some weird stuff going on with their U.S. distribution. And, you know, a lot of products are always out of stock. This one's on back order right now. Just... Be weary of the music group, the music tribe, for now. Anyways, until next time, if you got any questions about this, throw it down in the comments section. Um, you know, if you want to hear what it sounds like, hit up somebody else's YouTube channel, because there's a lot of guys that plug this thing in and fiddle through all of it and sing into it and stuff. I am not going to do that today. But until next time, have a good day.